the usually is evaluated at presentation. And fourth, with successful therapies, first the CRP and the DSR. And the black catcher, uh, this was a golden standard for this. Uh, if you got black catchers, uh, bacteria uh, group, uh, this means this infection uh, we can diagnose. This. And uh, acute osteomyelitis is positive about the black catcher, uh, just 50%. The uh, X-rays, uh, also we call it the radio RG uh, for this uh, uh, diagnosis. Uh, we can see uh, it can be normal in the early stage. And uh, always the soft tissues wearing and uh, the periosteum uh, uh, evaluation and the lytic changes. Uh, also we can got uh, uh, sclerotic changes after this. Pictures. So we are going to talk about the radiography of this disease. Uh, always the negative films are usually negative with first 10 days. And uh, thereafter, a localized area of bone destruction is observed in the metaphysis around it by a wild area of declassified uh, fired. De the classified bone. Bony changes are most evident for 14 to 21 days and initially manifested at periosteal evaluation followed by a cortical or medullary looseness. By 20 to 8 days, by 28 days, 90% of patients demonstrate some abnormalities. Here is the picture uh, for the osteomyelitis. Uh, the radiography reveals uh, lytic lesion and uh, periosteal reaction. The MRI. The MRI is effective in the early detection and the surgical localization of osteomyelitis. Studies have showed this uh, separation of compared with pre-radiography CT and uh, radionuclide scanning in selected anatomic locations, and uh, the sensitivity of range from 90% to 100%. And also we can use ECT uh, to diagnose. And this bone scan shown in the increased uptake area of the osteomyelitis as these places. The CD scanning. The CD scanning can uh, dip, uh, dip uh, abnormal calcification, ossification, and uh, intercortical abnormalities. It probably uh, most useful in the evaluation of spinal vertebral lesions. It may also be superior in areas with complex anatomy, uh, for example, like uh, pelvis, uh, stomach, and uh, calcaneus. Uh, we can also use ultrasound uh, graphy to diagnose. And this was a very simple and uh, inexpensive technique has shown a promise and a particularly in children with acute osteomyelitis. And this uh, uh, ultrasonography may demonstrate changes as early as one to two days after onset of symptoms. And uh, abnormalities include soft tissue abscess of fluid correction and uh, periosteum evaluation. The biopsy. The biopsy for identification of passenger, and this was the golden standard. Also, uh, through the biopsy, we we can use microscopy, and uh, this was pathologic uh, films of this uh, disease. The differential diagnosis. There are many diseases was so like the uh, osteomyelitis. Uh, the first one was septic osteomyelitis, and we, we say the septic osteomyelitis and, uh, was uh, commonly 
or uh, have a bad uh, movement of the joint. And the acute uh, rheumatic arthritis is also uh, was closed uh, to, to the osteomyelitis. And uh, hematural roses and the uvus sarcoma. And the management of the, this disease uh, first was the splitting of the limb. And uh, we fruit and uh, electrode the imbalances. And uh, the an antibiotic treatment is very important. And uh, this was entire development upon uh, identification of the causal organism and its sensitivities. Usually, intravenous antibiotics are prescribed for two uh, for, for three weeks and uh, followed by three weeks of oral antibiotics. And this is indicated by a fall in WBC count and the ESR and the temperature and the improvement of the local symptom size. The treatment of this osteomyelitis. Uh, we also use surgery and the antibiotic treatment and uh, the complementary to each other. The choice of antibiotic is based on the highest three ones. The first one was uh, bacterial activity and the, the second one was least toxicity and uh, we should use antibiotic drugs for the lowest count, cost for the lowest cost. And uh, we got uh, principles for the treatment. Uh, we so-called NAS principles. Uh, NAS principles was uh, first seen in Jeff Jays, which was a very famous journey for our aesthetics. And uh, the NAP proposed five principles for the treatment of an acute hematogenous osteomyelitis. The first one, was appropriate antibiotic will be effective before pers formation. And uh, the second rule is antibiotics will not sterilize uh, vascular tissues or absences, and uh, such area requires surgical removal. The result principle was if such removal is effective. Antibiotics should prevent their reformation. Therefore, a primary closure should be safe. And the fourth rule was the surgical should not damage already ischemic bone and soft tissue. And uh, the fifth, bone, uh, fifth principle was antibiotics should be continued after surgery. The indications for the surgery, as we talk about all the treatment, uh, we know we should take some surgeries for some patients. But what is the indications? Uh, the two main indications for the surgery in acute hematogenous osteomyelitis are these. Uh, the first one is the presence of absence requiring drainage. Of course, this one should be indications uh, because a lot of absences they got caused pain and uh, the, 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 the required drainage. And uh, the second one was failure of patient to improve despite appropriate intravenous antibiotics. If your antibiotic treatment fa fails, surgical uh, could be the only way. The appropriate uh, therapy, uh, which would cause antibiotic radical uh, therapies, uh, uh, which kind of was proper, and this was uh, the rules, okay? The first was the patient should be treated for four to six weeks. The duration is very important uh, with appropriate antimicro uh, beard therapy and uh, dating from the innovation of therapy or following the last major uh, debridement surgery. With the hematogenous osteomyelitis, uh, which was newborn to adult, 
and uh, the primary treatment is a combination of penicillin resistant uh, things and uh, as a third generation cephalosporin was used and the alternative therapy is vacuumacin or ocrindamycin as a third generation cephalosporin In addition to this above mentioned antibiotic materials, cephaloprostin and rifampicin may be an appropriate combination of therapy for adult patients. If there is evidence of infection with gram negative bacilli and there include a third generation cephaloprostin was very important. In patients with sickle cell and anemia uh, and the osteomyelitis, uh, this was a, a different uh, situation. The primary bacteria caused uh, usually as aureus and the salmon uh, species and uh, their primary choice for this treatment uh, also we use uh, frocrine antibiotics. And uh, this kind of biotics should not be used in children because it infected their bone growth. And the third generation uh, cephalopri, uh, except is a very alternative choice. This was the uh, summary of osteomyelitis. Uh, we can see the pictures here. It always uh, the the whole bone got infections, and uh, this will not be uh, very much necrosis on the bone. The ceremony of to myelitis uh, is relatively rare, uh, and uh, it should be diagnosed as uh, this six uh, standard. The first one was uh, it should be several bones involved, and. Uh, the second role is uh, symmetrical involvement of the bones. And the third one, it should be severe osteomyelitis. And the fourth one, and the, the spine may be involved, so you should uh, take a check of this patient's spine. The fifth one is always associated with sickle uh, cell anemia present. And uh, the sixth one was a stone culture, uh, it can be positive. The, Simmons osteomyelitis tends to be uh, diaphysial, uh, rather than a lot of the osteomyelitis as the metal physio. Uh, the complications of the chronic osteomyelitis. Uh, we know the first is the deformities of the bones, and uh, always the first uh, complications. And uh, the second one was pathological fractures, and the third one was uh, systematic effects uh, such as chronic fever or fatigue and uh, the fourth one also very important is uh, amyloidosis of the AA type uh, which means a secondary amyloidos amyloidosis uh, this can get further uh, deficit in the kidney and liver and the blood vessels the fourth uh, the fifth complication is squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. The skin at the age of the draining sign tracts may undergo malignant transformation over time. It always stated by the chronic osteomyelitis. And the third one was sepsis. And, se se uh, and the last one was very uh, sarcoma and the infected bone. We got specific forms of the uh, chronic osteomyelitis. The uh, forms uh, like uh, road eye abscess and the tetrachorosis osteomyelitis, uh, the osteomyelitis of congenital uh, syphilis and uh, the osteomyelitis of acquired syphilis. This is broad eye abscess. 
uh, we can see this necklace is here, it's round and it's uh, very clear in the x-ray. And the broadi abscess is a small intraosteosis uh, abscess that frequently involved in the cortex and is warmed up by a reactive bone. And this uh, was very uh, important one in the clinic abscess. Uh, also, we got uh, uh, sclerosing osteomyelitis. Uh, this kind uh, type of the osteomyelitis uh, was uh, uh, characterized as a sclerosing of the home bone, and it was typically developed in gel and is associated with extensive new bone formation. The TB, uh, which was Typical osteomyelitis uh, was uh, the TB is very uh, common uh, reason for the osteomyelitis, and uh, uh, we will talk about another uh, lecture uh, about the TB. And uh, this was only uh, just a uh, slide shows the TB osteomyelitis. It was a skeletal TB uh, process. Typical crossing osmolitis involve mainly the thoracic and the lumbar vertebrae. There is extensive necrosis and the bone, bony destruction with compressed fractures and their extension to soft tissues, including processes called abscess. And the typical osteomyelitis of the bone is secondary hematogenous spread from the primary source in the lamb or GI tract. It most commonly occurs in the vertebral and uh, round bones. And uh, once this is established, the vessi provoke the uh, chronic inflammatory reactions. The small patches of coarsis necrosis occur and this uh, progresses to form larger abscesses. The infection are sprays across the epiphysis into this joint, and the infection may track around soft tissue to appear as a cold abscess at a distant site. This is the pictures for the tuberculosis of the spine. And to the spinal tuberculosis, uh, the magnetic retinosic imaging of the spine uh, reviewing osteomyelitis involve T10 and the T11 uh, vertebral bodies and uh, the disc space is this is the disc space is also involved and uh, adjacent uh, medical articular uh, paravertebral absence uh, like B we got everything uh, which was process abscesses. And uh, this is a computer tomography scan of the abdominal shown in the left uh, iliac process abscess, uh, which was what we got over here. And uh, that likely originated from the tuberculosis osteomyelitis involving the T12 and the L1 and L2 vertebrae. Syphilitic osteomyelitis. Uh, this is very rare in China, and the transpessor spread of this kind of disease is always the fetus result in congenital uh, phyllosis. And the uh, wrong bones always involved, such as the tibial and uh, the marrow affected bone as this disease. And the congenital uh, syphilis has two forms. And uh, we, we call this uh, periosteolitis and uh, the osteochronditis. Regarding the cryot phyllis, uh, bone lesions are manifest, manis, manifest, <laughs> manifestations of te, te, uh, what do they get? Tertiary. 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 Tertiary phyllis, tertiary phyllis. 
uh, gra gravitous lesions appear as uh, discrete uh, pun punched out uh, radiolucent lesions in medulla or destructive lesions within the cortex. The surrounding bone is uh, sclerotic and uh, no discharge is present. Bone frequently affected and uh, resists of nose, uh, late uh, scroll and uh, extremities, especially the wrong uh, tubular bones and such as tibial. The historical origin of this disease is very clear. Is this is uh, we call it tibial uh, fissure osteomyelitis, and uh, this was uh, the Steinberg uh, expert for this uh, was a silver tibial, uh, like uh, this tibial, like uh, a silver. This is Philip osteomyelitis. And uh, we got a, a clinical diagnosis. We got to talk about this. And uh, we have. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we got a, a bone, bone aspiration and the blood cultures and the cultures from other septic surface. Uh, and uh, we got antibiotic therapy. Uh, the uh, high dose ones and the based on grandstand of a, a private uh, therapies. And uh, we have this uh, cultured antibiotic suspicious, suspectable result, and we change an antibiotic of the necrosis. So, so this is the whole way of treat uh, um, osteomyelitis. Uh, we got a uh, prognosis uh, for osteomyelitis, and uh, with early diagnosis and appropriate treatment, the prognosis for uh, osteomyelitis is good. And and an antibiotic uh, regimens are used for four to eight weeks, and sometimes longer in the treatment of, of osteomyelitis, depending. On the bacteria that caused it and uh, the response of the patient. Uh, commonly, patients can make a full recovery without long standing uh, complications. Uh, however, the, there is a long delay in the diagnosis or treatment. There can be severe damage to the bone or surrounding soft tissue that can lead to permanent difficulty deficit or make the patient more prone to uh, recurrence. And uh, if uh, surgery or bone grafting is needed, uh, this will prolong the time it takes to recover. Okay, thanks for listening. And that uh, was uh, all the lectures for the osteomyelitis.